to the program. Let's get this candle out of the way. Thank you very much. It's Let's Make a Deal Night here. That woman gave me a beautiful, beautiful portable phone. It was a Hayataki Sanyo something. Oh, I love that kind. And in return, she gets the the difference between General So's chicken and General Chang's chicken. He was just an amazing man. Fascinating man. And as gentlemen, we're all very excited because uh, earlier tonight, right here on uh, CBS, there was a half-hour Ross Perot infomercial. It's a, or, or as CBS is calling it, touched by a screwball. Very, very exciting. I, I'm wondering uh, if Ross Perot, he just may be a little too wacky to be president of the United States. Because, you know, during the uh, infomercial, he's got those big uh, charts, the big cards with the charts. He had three charts, beautiful pieces of work, three charts detailing exactly how you do the Macarena. And I thought, well, now that's, that's a waste of time, ain't it? We don't need that. I don't think you do need that. But... Uh, according to the uh, latest polls, uh, Ross Perot is still in uh, single digits, and that's just his height. Hey, Macarena. Uh, during the infomercial, and I don't think anybody saw this coming. As you know, tonight was the big night. During the infomercial right here on CBS, Ross Perot announced his running mate, the man who will be a heartbeat away from Ross Perot as president if he is elected. Announced his running mate for vice president. No, uh, quite a surprise. Tupac Shakur. No kidding. <laughs> Stunned. I was choice. stunned. I was stunned. I'm no expert. I'm no pundit, but I was. Uh, I was stunned. You know, uh, Saturday night, Tupac Shakur. He was leaving the Bruce Seldon, uh, Mike Tyson fight in Las Vegas, and he was shot four times. But he's he's okay. He's okay. But he was shot four times. That means he actually survived more rounds than Seldon. Yes. Yeah. True. True story. Exactly. Survived more rounds than Seldon. And apparently. Apparently, Tupac was uh, shot because his uh, producer had insulted uh, someone at an award show. Well, thank God. You know, for a minute there, I was worried that it, it might be trivial. But that, thank God. <laughs> worried that it... Yeah, no, but it's not. Uh, so let's see. He's been shot now uh, twice. Uh, twice now. Two different shooting episodes in the last year and a half. Tupac Shakur. He's going to be okay, but, you know, that's tough to get shot, you know, that often. Uh... But it has a silver lining. Earlier today, he was named a new spokesman for the Target stores. So I thought, well, there you go. There you go. You can't, you can't beat that, can you? You can't beat that. You can't beat that, ladies and gentlemen. John Stewart is on our uh, program this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Very funny man. Marv Albert and the Cranberries. Now he's a good friend, Paul Schaefer. <laughs> something ladies and gentlemen can you feel the excitement are you are you like me are you a television owner you know today in this day we live in 1996 a lot of people own more than one television how many do you own paul as a matter of fact i have i think i have three in the house yeah three in the house. Yeah. you probably have one in the living room probably have one in the uh, game room the family room yeah. the, the rifle range do you have one in the rifle range one in the rifle range one in the indoor yeah. rifle range that's and one nice. in the bowling alley right, so you have about three the, uh, i have uh, i have uh, of course i have one in the uh, living room yes uh one in the solarium solarium is good one in, of course, the uh, ballroom. Ballroom. One in the laboratory. Are they in the lab? <laughs> oh, one, one in the, uh, you know, where the poodles live. One in the, the poodle, poodle house. The poodle house. The poodle house, <laughs> yeah. So that's four or five, yeah. <laughs> On the property, I actually have a poodle house. Uh, anyway, the point I'm trying to uh, stuff down your throats here now is if you're a television owner and you enjoy television, then you know that uh, it's the new fall season right around the corner. Yes. And uh, CBS... This is going to be a very exciting time for CBS because in a week or so, they're announcing, they're, they're launching, they've announced that they're launching their new fall uh, program uh, schedule, and, and we're all very, very excited. And I thought to myself, maybe there's something I can do to help the network. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see what we can do to, to help nudge that effort along. Do me a favor now. Turn on the external camera. There's the lobby of the Ed Sullivan Theater building. It sits right there on uh, Broadway. All right, let's go out onto the street now. We're supposed to get heavy thunderstorm activity sometime later today. Kind of hot, kind of muggy in New York City. It's Broadway, the street that's paved with gold, the street of a million dreams. And we're going today into the pizza restaurant, Joe G Pizza, 
Right in there, free, free, David Letterman something. Well, we'll come back. All right, I'll tell you what, let's just kind of walk through. How do you do, ma'am? Nice to see you. Happy Tuesday afternoon. What is your name? Alona. Alona. Well, you won't be Alona very long. Alona. I'm a tourist. You know what I'm saying? Easy. But I want to tell you, Alona, you are easy on the eyes. All right, let's continue. Thank you very much. Enjoy your afternoon. Hello, kids. It's me, Dave, America's only true last role model for the kids. The kids love me. You kids love me, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. What is your name? I'm Austin. I'm uh -huh. Nice to have you kids. You enjoying some pizza today? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get yourself a big, sloppy, greasy pie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, kids. Goodbye. Be careful. Bye. Okay, I want to tell you something. The kids love me. Wherever I go, it's, the reaction is always the same. Just like that. The kids go berserk. <laughs> All right, what's up? How you doing, buddy? What's up? What's your name, sir? David. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you right there. What is your name? David. Do you work there, David? Uh, no, I'm eating. Oh, are you eating? I tried to get on. Al wouldn't let me in the show. Yeah, geez. Yeah, why do you suppose a thing like that happens? <laughs> I'll have a ticket. All right, what, how old are you? I'm 20. 20? You're lying, aren't you? No. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? Miami. Well, what are you doing in Miami? What I do, uh, I'm going here to Chicago to go to school. Ah, uh, this story gets fishier and fishier by the minute. You're on your way to Chicago to go to school. Where yeah. do you go to school in Chicago? DePaul. Oh, you do not. Why would I lie? <laughs> well, look at you. You'd lie to get on TV. Well, yeah, but... Uh, All right, you... stay right there. Grab onto a hoagie and stay right there. All I may right, have to come go. back to you. All, All right, right let's on, keep go going. On. All right, thank you. Now, he's directing. All right. There's a guy running. Immigration! All right, fine. The oldest joke in the book. Oh, they're doing a brisk business in Joe G's. We're looking for somebody who has that certain something, somebody who just has that certain savoir faire. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Hi, right, nice to see you too. You own the place, right? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, all the time. good. We're looking. We, uh, I hope we're not chasing customers out, all right? You don't mind if we just look around? Absolutely not. Okay, thank you. We'll continue to look around here. Woo! Uh, Let's see, what do we have here? Oh, there, uh, that's, uh, how do you do? Hello there. Hi, how's everybody? Hi, uh, fine. Uh, are you with the... <laughs> What's your name, sir? Konstantin. I'm from Germany. I tried to see your show, uh -huh. but it's no way, huh? What town Take in Germany? In. Um, little town in Black Forest. Uh -huh. in, in the Black Forest? Is it near Stuttgart? Um, near Stuttgart? Wa yes, 90 minutes from Wo Stuttgart. Wo Sie? Wie heißen Sie? Wo yeah. ist die Bank? Haben Sie ein belegtes Broten, mein Freund? Ja. Was tun Sie? I have two for you. Was tut mir leid? Yeah. Great. How long have you been in this country? Um, it's good. How long? Oh, um, well. Das ist gut. My das ist gut. My das ist sehr gut. Das ist sehr, sehr gut, mein Freund. Yeah, my English is not that good. Jawohl. Uh, have you ever been on television? What's your name? Gunther? Do you mind if I call you Gunther? No, Constantine. All right, I'm going to call you Gunther. If you mind, do you mind? Okay. All right. <laughs> call me Gunther. How long have you been in the United States? Um, for four days. Four days, and you're photographing military installations? Is that what you said? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Take a bow, will you? All right, now listen. Um... Uh, <laughs> Gunther. Yeah. Hey, how about that Steffi Graf? Am I right on that Steffi Graf? Yeah. How about that Michael Schumacher, huh? How about yeah. that? Yes, sir. Now, listen, uh, Gunther, uh, because it's the beginning of the new fall TV season, we're going to ask you tonight, would you like to have your show, your own show, on CBS? Would you like to have your own show on CBS? All right, Gunther, do me a favor as quickly as you can. Run out of the restaurant, we'll take care of the check, and get yourself in here to the Ed Sullivan Theater.
23. 23 years old, ever done any acting, ever done any television work before in your life? No. Yeah, Gunther, tonight your life is going to change because okay. tonight we're going to put you in your own, your very own half hour CBS television situation comedy. Gunther, wow. it's the American dream. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome back to The Late Show, ladies and gentlemen. Many, many, many wonderful, exciting things going on here on The Late Show tonight. Not the least of which, not the least of which, once again, we prove our global superiority and appeal and identity. From all over the world, Gunther from Germany, here to see the show right now. To finish the sentence, Paul, I've got paperwork yes, to do. Yes, no, and right now he is preparing to have his own that's show right, that's on CBS. Right. But what I'm trying to say is we are beloved. You see how the kids, you see those kids, you see their faces light up when they knew who they were talking to? Yeah. So it's global superiority. I'm talking to a couple of lawn jockeys. But <laughs> we are beloved uh, around the world, Rather. not just here in the New York or the tri-state area. John Stewart is on the program, Marv Albert, and, of course, the Cranberries. It's a big, big night, ladies and gentlemen. But... Uh, More importantly, never done this before, we're playing, uh, would you like to have your own uh, show on uh, CBS? And we found a lovely man, uh, we think his name is Gunther, maybe it's Gunther, maybe it's not Gunther. We're calling him Gunther. And he's from a little town in the Black Forest, maybe it's Stuttgart, maybe it ain't. So we now, we need a name for uh, Gunther's half-hour situation television comedy show. Uh, Gunther's house, mm, I don't think so. Uh, Gunther's place, uh, call me Gunther, oh I like that. <laughs> Where's Gunther? Here's Gunther. Here comes Gunther. It's Gunther. I like that. Gunther's here. That's our Gunther. Oh, uh, not him. Now, the name we've selected for the big show tonight, Everybody Loves Gunther. Everybody Loves Gunther. Are we ready? Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're all set. And now, please enjoy... The first episode of Everybody Loves Gunther. Joey, did you eat the cherry pie I baked especially for the PTA meeting? No way, Mom. Who'd be dumb enough to do a thing like that? I can sure use a glass of milk. First, good first episode. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed it. Oh, they're off to a Hardly wait for the second oh, one. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, here in my right hand, I have a copy of tonight's top ten list. Let's do that. Uh, from the home office in Wahoo, Nebraska, the uh, category tonight, the top ten Ross Perot campaign slogans. Top 10 Ross Perot campaign slogans. Now, you know, he ran for president back in 92, and then he pulled out, and then he got back in, and uh, he was defeated. Although he made a name for himself, kind of a showing there, and busted his way into the big time. And now he's decided he's running again. Top 10 now, campaign slogans for Ross Perot. Here we go, number 10. Perot, he's half Dole's age and half Clinton's weight. Number 9. Don't pronounce the T, but do pronounce him insane. Number 8, he's small enough to fit through the White House dog door. Number seven, remember the guy you didn't really want in 92? <laughs> Number six, his ears are big, his skull is thick, and he's a raving lunatic. What a pun. What a pun. Oh, sorry. Number five, he'll put, his, he'll put the deficit on his gold card. Number four, uh, make Ross your boss. Number three, finally, a man you can trust as far as you can throw him. Number two, He's as ready as a pregnant armadillo in a burning outhouse. I have no idea what that means. And the number one Ross Perot campaign slogan, Perot, he's crazy for America. There you go. Okay, okay. 
It's quite a buzz. You can feel the buzz about uh, Everybody Loves Gunther. And I understand now we're ready for the second episode. Ladies and gentlemen, Everybody Loves Gunther. Honey, could you fix me a snack? I'm too tired. Could you do it yourself? Sounds like our honeymoon night. Everybody loves Gunther, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice. Sehr gut. Sehr gut. We'll be right back with John Stewart, folks. John Stewart is on the program. Marv Albert and the uh, Cranberries were all terribly, terribly excited, ladies and gentlemen, because, yes, your prayers have been answered. It's time for another episode of Everybody Loves Gunther. Gunther, I'm stuck in this crossword puzzle. What's a ten-letter word for a pain in the neck? Hmm. I got it. You're mother. You bastard! I don't know. You all right, Gunther? He's doing great. Okay. Absolutely great. No. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta ask yourself, how comfortable, really, really, how comfortable are you pissing off the Germans? <laughs> I never thought of that. You all right, Gunther? Yeah, I never thought of that. Our first guest is a uh, very, very funny and entertaining man, and we always appreciate it when he drops by for a visit. He has a brand new uh, HBO special live from Miami Beach, which airs on uh, September 20th at 9 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. Excitement, John Stewart. John! <laughs> That Gunther. Yeah, he's a nice guy, isn't he? That is a fine. I remember I first saw him at a Rathskeller in Berlin. <laughs> doing a one-man uh, tribute to Wagner. <laughs> Terrific. Well, that's nice. How you been, buddy? I'm doing uh, very nicely. This is my time of year. Mm -hmm. I'm plum excited. Uh, uh, it's uh, Jewish New Year's. Oh, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow, we're still outnumbered. All right. Um, <laughs> Jewish New Year's is uh, Friday uh -huh. or Saturday or Sunday. I really don't pay attention. But um, what year is it going to be? Uh, 1903. I don't. 1903. Uh, it's something special. Is that right? I didn't realize. It's that. like 58. I'll it's see it when I go to Times Square Hebrew for New Year's calendar. and they it's drop the bagel. I'll see the year. I don't know. It's, 1903. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be quizzed. It's been so long since Hebrew school. I don't Sorry. remember. Oh man. But it's. It's. Uh, I love that time of year because you know the Jewish party. So uh, we're going to really go out with uh, some fruit and some wine and uh, <laughs> yeah. take it to the hoop this year, if you know what I mean. I'm sure I know what you mean. Absolutely. You're going to take it to the hoop. Take it to the hoop. Speaking of uh, hoop and the things athletic and the, the sports and on and on, uh, did you get a chance to have I was talk in to Atlanta. you before the, yeah, the Olympics? I was in the Atlanta. Yeah. Well, I wasn't there for the Olympics, but I was in Atlanta. Oh, wait, you weren't there? I was there a week later. Oh. Did you get tickets? <laughs> no, I didn't. I had to work. You, I'm sorry. I'm, you just feel like a loser when you're there a week <laughs> later. You're walking around the Olympic Village just going, so they ran here. This is where they ran. Uh -huh. That must have been very interesting. <laughs> um, but I, uh, uh, I watched the Olympics. Were there other countries in it this year? Because I watched it on NBC. I couldn't tell. <laughs> it's hard to know, wasn't it? It was hard to, uh, to we, see. We don't know. If they were... Uh, Next year, honestly, the, the next time they have it, just the other countries cancel them out. They just get in the way of our camera shots. They're really annoying. <laughs> it's just, yeah. It screws up the Nike ads. They don't they just? Uh, I had a good time watching it. But you, you, are you the kind of person, and I, and I get the sense that maybe you're not, that watches a lot of sports on television. You seem like more of an active guy, less sedentary lifestyle for you. I used to be. I'm watching it now like oh, crazy. Really? And it's, uh, 
It's actually creating a problem in my new relationship. You watch sports on television all the time? I'm watching it like just a sports nut. I watch it all the time. And, uh, well, and forgive me for congratulations. A new relationship, you said? It's a new relationship, nice and it's, it's putting a strain on it. Oh, and, I'm sorry uh, to hear that. I don't. I actually, I have a clip if you'd like to see. You have a clip <laughs> of how your new relationship is being strained? Well, sure, I, I'd like to show the people so they can see the trouble <laughs> okay. I go through at home. Sure, let's take a look at that clip. Right. John Stewart. Honey, if I told you once, I told you a thousand times, I get enough of that at work. I don't need it at home as well. Sweetheart, I'm just trying to learn about what you do. That's all. I'm just... Well, don't. And I thought I told you to hem these pants. <laughs> I said I'd do it after murder, she wrote. Uh, Ouch! <laughs> uh, you know what is embarrassing in that? What's that? Embarrassing that Gunther is a better actor than I, was I am. Just gonna That's say, what's embarrassing Maybe about they that. can work you guys into an that episode of Everybody man. Loves Gunther. This uh, note was handed to me, but I believe it's for you, John. Does that mean anything to you, buddy? It's, uh, it's funny you asked me about the Jewish New Year's Day. <laughs> yeah. Because it's uh, the year 5757. 57. 57. 57. Yeah, there you Thank go. Thank you very much. <laughs> All Thank right. you. Oh, we put that to bed. Oh, my God. But I, I do watch a lot of sports. I, you know what I watched about the Olympics that, that blew my mind was the courage of uh, the gymnastics, the, oh, yeah. the women's team. Because I'll tell you something about myself. If I were to do a gymnastics vault mm -hmm. and, and land on my ankle mm -hmm. and tear it up, yeah. that's my last vault. I think you know so. what I'm saying? Yeah. Just get on the bus and go home. I don't care how many middle-aged Romanian fellas are urging no. me on. That's, uh, <laughs> that's my last vault. I'm going home. Well, they can be very persuasive. Can't they? Oh, yeah. What an incredible motivator he is. He just said, you can do it. You can do it. I can't believe she just didn't go, you do it. I cannot move my leg. You know, it was interesting, after the Olympics, we had the uh, American gymnastics team on. All and, of them? Yeah, they're, they're just, I mean, they, they, the appearance is they're just kids. Some right. are younger than others. But overall, you're just, they're, they're tiny, little, frail things competing at the top of their form, uh, the highest it's, competition in the I world. I saw the 14-year-old, the Dominique Moshan, she was doing the balance beam routine, and she, uh, she did a, uh, she was in a routine, she did, I think, a double flick-flack into a Hamel Camel. And, uh, <laughs> flick-flack into a Hamel Camel. Yeah, and, and slammed her head on the balance beam, yeah. which oh, is, uh, I don't know if you know, made of wood. Mm -hmm. And uh, she does it. She's 14, and she just does this. And then goes into her dismount. Con continues with the thing. It's and amazing. again, for me, yeah. when I slam my head on the balance beam, I, uh, You're done. I don't go into my dismount. I, uh, <laughs> I go into my uncontrollable fall. I will get those over. You're on your back counting birds. All right, it's... Oh, 57, 57. Put that up there. There you for go. folks just tuning in. For it's the 57, 57. We got to uh, pause here for a second, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's commercials coming up now. Viewing these commercials, I've said this to you a million times, it's optional. But when they're over, come back and watch the rest of the show. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stewart is here, Marv Albert is here, and uh, the Cranberries. And the last time I saw you, I don't know when it was, like a year, six months? I know you're working on movies. Yes. And I know you're also continuing to travel around the country with uh, your stand-up comedy. Yes. Very and yet popular. still managed to work at Hula Hands. How do I do all this? <laughs> Good gig. <laughs> yeah, I've been traveling around. You I'm like being out for... there on the road? It's lonely, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Never thought about it. Sorry. <laughs> I bring my girlfriend sometimes. We That's went nice. to uh, uh, Marv. We played at the. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though, after seeing Gunther tonight. Stop it. Oh, stop right. it. <laughs> Once you go German. Oh, right. no. Uh, oh, no. I should have said Deutsch. It rhymes yeah. easier. Um, I, I, we went to the Catskills, which uh, you have to do in the, the car. Catskill Mountains are about like 100 miles north of New York City, something like I that. I fell asleep in the car, yeah. Dave. I don't know. <laughs> you know I wasn't paying attention to the odometer. No, I'm sorry. I just tried to <laughs> set the scene for the folks geographically. It's, it's, uh, it's like the, the, the Jewish Vegas mm. without the games or anything nice. Um, <laughs> so, no, it's beautiful no, up it's, there. It is beautiful countryside. Yeah, uh, lovely. But the hotels, I, I went to play there because it's like a mecca. You have to do it. And uh, I mean, these hotels have been having big, huge shows since the 1930s. They are legendary. Yeah. They're legendary. They had huge shows since the 30s. Kutcher's. So you, you figure, Kutcher's, the Concord, yeah. all those. You figure they'll still attract a pretty good audience up there. Sure. I just didn't realize it was the same audience <laughs> that was there in the 30s. 
<laughs> so, uh, I don't know well, if you know this, <laughs> not McCrowd. <laughs> they must have been like, what, in their early hundreds? Early hundreds, yeah. just sitting there, smoking their Chesterfields, giving you that look like, you'll never be as good as park your carcass. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, so, uh, I, I go out and I do it, and the... They, you, you do the show for them, and they all... What's very nice is afterwards they come up to you after the show, and they all go, eh. So, uh, <laughs> that must be very, very gratifying. Very gratifying. But I brought my girlfriend, who is not Jewish, huh. so I was playing the big man, the big Jew, going, right. you know, honey, these are blintzes. This is what we eat. You know, that kind of thing. These are bagels. Please butter one. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so there's a synagogue in the hotel. I don't know why. Uh, you know, who's going to go up, honey, circumcision time, let's go to the Catskills, you know. <laughs> but there's a synagogue there. I know. Uh, so we walk past it, there's a little table outside the synagogue with candles mm -hmm. that are lit to memorialize mm -hmm. beloved people who passed on. Yes. It was a Friday night. So after the show, we walked by the synagogue, we went, there's the synagogue, passed the table, didn't say anything. My girlfriend's very romantic. So I just walked past the synagogue and the candles without thinking twice. I turn around. She's holding three of the candles. She says, won't this be nice in the bathroom? <laughs> and I said, it would be very nice if you don't mind bathing with dead souls. <laughs> no, she didn't know. Good heavens. No excuse. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Marv Albert would never pull that in the no. Catskills. <laughs> no telling what Marv would pull. Uh, and you're doing, a, uh, you're doing an HBO show, a uh, yeah. very exciting idea for a, a program. Uh, yes. Your stand-up comedy, you're doing it. Tell the folks what about it. Uh, it's going to be a stand-up comedy show, and it's not about the money for mm, me. It's no. about the laughter. Exactly. And the bringing laughter, it to, the, love. Uh, to yeah. the people. And it's just, it, it's a fun thing to put together. It's going to be down in Miami. Uh, I've been there before. Although I'm not good with the heat. Like, I, have you ever been to Arizona? Do you ever go out there? Do yeah, I've been you, there several times. I've been there in the summer, like 105, 110 degrees. Right. Yeah. Now, does that seem like people should be living there? Do you? <laughs> no, but it's fun. You know, I like unusual stuff. Do you really? Yeah, I thought that was fun. I just thought it was, because <laughs> you walk out there and, and, and they say to you, you know, but it's, it's, it's a dry heat. I know. Much like a coal oven, though. It's like, <laughs> no. you can't even breathe. But isn't it fun? I mean, is it as an oddity? You know, you leave fun the hotel? And fun in the way of, like, taking a cigarette and pressing it into your palm fun. <laughs> you, really, you really enjoy stuff I like did that. enjoy that. Yeah, I found it exhilarating in, in an odd way. Yeah, I'm sure it shortened my life by several years. But right, right, right. <laughs> it was fun. I just like that they have, they have these hoods on the outside of the buildings, like the awnings, mm -hmm. that spray people with water. Yeah, that's right. Which I have never seen because they don't have them where I live on earth. Uh -huh. They don't have... <laughs> the people shouldn't live. Uh, the, uh, the HBO show, let me make sure we have it right, John, uh, is coming up... Uh, September 20th. September 20th. HBO, that's a it's Saturday night, right? A Friday night. Friday night. Uh, I go on at 9. Gunther goes on at 8. There you don't go. miss Sweater that. Show. Back to back. Good to see you again, John. It's very nice Thank to see you. you. Thanks for having John me. John Stewart, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Marv Albert. Can you tell, ladies and gentlemen? Can you feel it? Can you taste it? Can you smell it? Yes, it's time for another episode of Everybody Loves Gunther. Honey, I invited my boss over for dinner. Are you crazy? All I have for dinner is meatloaf. <laughs> Everybody loves Gunther. I'm gonna tell you something. That's gonna be that's gonna be another Roseanne. That's gonna be another Mork and Minnie. That's gonna be another Friends. It's gonna be another Seinfeld. That thing has got hit written all over. I think you're right. That But how about that house Gunther's got? That's a nice place. Where is that? Uh, Scarsdale or Larchmont or yeah, something? Could be oh, the high the, there it there is. It Look is. at that. That's yeah, a beauty. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Congratulations, That's Gunther. Nice. nice going. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I can be serious with you now for a minute, and I get the feeling I can be, any sportscaster can pinpoint the drama, upset, or thrill of athletic competition, but only our next guest has the insight and experience it takes to locate the wild and the wacky. Please welcome back the voice of the Knicks, the Rangers, and the NBA on NBC, Marv Albert. Yeah, Marv, how you doing? Marv, okay, let's tell the folks 
around the country, yeah. uh, something very nice is happening for you uh, later this week right. down at Madison Square Garden. You've been the voice of uh, the next, of course, they play in the garden. They call the garden home. You've been the voice of the Rangers, and you go way, way back. You've been doing this now for 30, 30, 40 years. Not quite. Like that. No, yes, exactly. let's not get crazy. But Thursday yeah. night, you, Marv, are being honored. Yes. For all of your uh, years well, of devotion, loyalty, and sports casting expertise. It will also be the... batting practice. It's kind of a roast, it's a roast. and honor. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, I wish I could be there Thursday night. Honestly, I wish I could be there with you. <laughs> but so give my best to everyone. Oh, you, you won't be I there? say I wish I could be there. Oh, you wish you could I be there? I wish I could be there, yeah, yeah but I, I can't. I saw you and John Stewart uh, <laughs> talking about the Jewish just New Year. Tonight. Yes, yeah, earlier, right. 57, 57, <laughs> the Jewish New Year. <laughs> yeah. I have such a problem with that because for the next three weeks, I know I'll be writing 57, 56 on all my on checks. checks. Yeah. Hey, I want to. Uh, hey, I want to tell. Hey, I, hey, hey, I want to tell you something. You okay, Dave? How, I'm fine. <laughs> How about those Yankees? Huh? What do you well, think, Well, faded hanging recently. On, but they're hanging on, Mark. Did you see that Steinbrenner mentioned you in passing regarding Dwight Gooden, who's been doing too many activities yep. recently? Yeah, shooting his mouth oh, off about, now. yeah. Oh, huh? turn on him now. <laughs> oh, turn on the guy now. <laughs> he said that they should concentrate now on the right. penetration, which Dwight is true. made an appearance here, and he has a, uh, apparently they're working on a movie yeah. possibility. Right. But he, he particularly pinpointed the appearance on this show. Yeah, well, he's going to have to get over it. Yeah. But I... I, I said it before, I think it would be nice to have the Yankees in the World Series. I think it would be good for oh, baseball. Baseball, right. frankly, for me, more baseball still got a black eye over that strike a couple of years ago. You're still affected by oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know you've been talking about it quite a bit, I know, in the, in the corridors here. <laughs> <laughs> Marv, do you have a, a selection of uh, sports? This is a thing. <laughs> this is some trouble in, yes. Some domestic trouble at Gunther's. Um, uh, you all right? You kids all right? Uh, well, okay. Congratulations. I guess you're going uh, commercial-free next week? <laughs> yeah, is that right. is next right. uh, Friday night? That's right. That's a great, a Thank great you, concept. Thank it you. has really worked well for public broadcasting. Yeah, well, we're very excited about it. Uh, Marv, I understand you brought with us, uh, as you do uh, each time, a collection of yes. interesting uh, videotapes from the world of sports, the right. wild and the wacky. Exactly. Right. Wild and the wacky is compiled, as always, by our... Dave Cra Katz. Katz, mm -hmm. our yeah. producer, mm -hmm. Dave Katz. And we have a, a fine selection from this uh, past month. All right, here we, we go. don't deal with the baseball strike. All right. Well, we'll okay, ready? Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look. Wild, wild and, and wacky. the wacky. And we open up, uh, we're timely, we open with tennis at the U.S. Open. Todd Martin in the near court, faking the overhead smash. Whoa. Over for the Man winner. alive. Thomas Mooster's return there. against Andre Agassi is yes. slightly off target. Man. Jerk one into the seats there, buddy. And uh, Stefan Edberg in the near court using his head on this shot. Look out. Whoa. Now, does that count? Does that count? I want to know. Does that count? To baseball. And uh -huh. a different approach by Orioles pitcher David Wells warming up He's with his teammates beer. from the that. beer mug in center wow. field. Hey, cute. I like that. And Braves pitcher Mark Wohlers trying to issue an intentional walk a bit off the mark. Oh, no. you gotta Not what he had in mind. It. Some hitting highlights of sorts. But Baltimore's he Bobby Bonilla swinging away. Whoa! Look out. Boy, now watch the foul ball. Oh, that's got to hurt, Dave. Right? Yikes, right in the ribs. And catcher Tony Pena signaling for an intentional walk, but Sneaky ducks down a position, catches straight yes. three oh, on John that's, that's a heady move. That's and Ray Ordonez feet. of the Mets with a drive past the center field of Marvin Bernard, right through the hole in the outfield fence. Whoa, that's extra base, Senator Marvin. On to some bases. fly ball sure. adventures. Brewers center fielder Kevin Kozlowski going that back to the like wall. Me. <laughs> He's trying. Like me playing. Pirate center fielder Jermaine oh. Allen's worth running out of room. And a good effort coming bell. up here by the Reds right fielder Thomas Howard. He's very now, good. Now, which way is the ball now, going a, to drop? That's a double right there. That's an automatic double. And we've had our share of unusual moments. Here's a candidate for stupid human trick showing off his skills. Apparently, there is the thought of making an arrest. <laughs> Mets third baseman Alvaro Espinosa in pursuit of a foul pop. Instead, the ball comes away with a French fry yeah. in the first row. At a recent golf tournament, Dave, Tom Lehman shot on 15, taking a a bad bounce right over to the Porter John. And before his next shot, Lehman politely knocks on the door to make sure he has not disturbed anyone. Now we close with best attempts. Terry Pendleton with a unique slide into oh, second God. base, and He'll he was out. out. Weeks. He'll be out for weeks. Twins outfielder Rich Beck. Look at that. Look at that Apparently, second base got on the way. Oh. And the Orioles grounds 
crew working feverishly to cover the field. Here comes a late arriving member of the crew. Nicely done. Yeah, look at the wild, the and wild the wacky and the over wacky. the past month. Okay. Mother, ladies and gentlemen. Mark, okay. Okay. Good Thank you here. We'll see you Thursday yeah, night, buddy. You. I hope so. We'll be right back with the cranberries. <laughs> Our uh, terrific band, great band, good, good band. I was in the uh, Cranberries for a while. Do you know that, Paul? You were in the yeah, Cranberries? Yeah, yeah. What did they, you play? Well, they let me go for stealing. Ah. Uh, they're from Limerick, Ireland, and they have a new CD. His uh, most recent CD uh, is entitled uh, To the Faithful Departed. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure to have them back on the program. Please welcome the Cranberries. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. We'll be right back. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we're nearly out of time. My thanks to the Cranberries, Marv Albert, John Stewart, and of course, a very, very special thanks to our new friend, the star of Everybody Loves Gunther, Constantine.